Hello everybody, this is Jeff, Rachel and Jam at eTechnos and we wanted to create a real quick and simple tutorial video just showing everybody how to complete and get the most out of their census templates. These are the templates that Employee Navigator and eTechnos have uh, created to make an exact roadmap for you to be able to send back to us and for us to upload all the employee details and the dependent details. And We're going to look at three templates. One is the employee only census. One will be the dependent only census, and then there's a third option if it's easier to put those together in an employee and dependent census. So we're going to show you the uh, how it comes when you get it in your inbox, and there'll be a tab to see what it looks like once it's been completed. And we're just going to talk through things to make it a little bit easier and helpful. It is very, very important that uh, any template or any census that's sent to eTechnos does not require us to edit any of the columns or the rows or any of the details. It's super important. We don't know the groups nearly as well as you guys do and your clients, so it's important that no data is edited in any way. So we want to help create this video to show exactly what it looks like to get it and complete it and send it back to us. It should really make the process smooth and easy. So with that, I'm going to go up and pull up, I think it's already up, the employee only census. Jim, you want to tell us a few things about it? Okay, the employee only census and the dependent only census are the easiest way of importing the employees into the system. Um, it's just because you're dividing the two pieces of data into two censuses. So we'll start with the employee only census. The columns highlighted in blue across the top are the ones that are integral to the employee navigator system. We need to have this information. We can't gloss over or miss any of the gender, hire dates, date of birth, first name, last names, or payroll groups. The most important uh, column in this is the Employee Navigator Social Security number. This is going to form the uh, employee record on the Employee Navigator system and every piece of information entered afterwards is going to tag into this Social Security number. As you go across the columns, some of the columns are in white uh, some are more important than others, but they're not integral to the system. There's a couple that we'd like to point out that are super important, such as the email address. If you go across all the way across, there's an email address. Now, if you intend on emailing your employees to enroll into the Employee Navigator system, an email obviously is very important. The rest of the columns that you can see, such as the address, and all the other personal information, the system will actually prompt them for this information when they register for the first time. The classes and the salary, that would have to be imported via human resources. Obviously, we will need to know the salary information if there's any benefits that are reliant on salary, such as LTD or voluntary life or group life. Uh, this can be loaded in a different, um, at a later date, but if you, if you can enter all of the information you know at this present moment in time and try and do it as completely as you can that would be the best course of action yeah and the other thing you told me about and how we know is really important is what work happens before we get the census is figuring out the names for these right it is i mean if you only have one payroll for every employee in your company the payroll group would be whatever you it would be the same name so group one would be group one throughout every single employee. If you have different classes within your company, we would have already gone over this before ahead of time to say what classes people would be put into. So if you have part-time, full-time classes, managerial classes, uh, dock workers classes, um, people that work there under three-year classes, these can be classed however you wish, but we would have to put this uh, get this sorted before and get them um, confirmed before we yeah. start filling in the employee census. Yeah. So anything else you want to say about the employee only? This is the one that uh, does not have the plans loaded in yet. That's going to be in a second video yes. adding plan selections, but just employee. So this is else? the employee selections. You have to enroll, import the employee correctly before you can put any plan selections in. You can't attach any plan benefit data to anyone who's not in the system. Gotcha. Perfect. Well, let's go to uh, the dependent, dependent only census template. How is so this different? 
It's, it's very slightly different. Now, if you wish your, and you put the employee data in the, in the employee census in first, when they go to register, they will be prompted to enter any dependent information at that point. If you'd like to preload the dependent census, mm -hmm. you can do so with this template. Now, the employee's social security number has to be written against every dependent that is being entered. So you might have the employee social security number written two or three or four times, depending on how many dependents they have. Now, as you go across the column, obviously the relationship is uh, in very important, their last name and their first name. And then as you go across the date of birth and the gender, now they're not in blue. Uh, employee Navigator doesn't deem this to be essential, but you do need this information if you would like to enroll them in any um, uh, benefits later on. Because obviously if you're doing a voluntary life for your spouse, the voluntary life rate will depend on what year your spouse was born in. Just a good habit, good practice if you have all that detail to go ahead and put it inside the site. Do they need any of these other details? They, well, the every record on the Employee Navigator system is based off the employee social security number. So all of the dependents will be added to the employee <laughs> record on gotcha. um, Employee Navigator. So they will not be a separate record for Sarah Smith, for example, and Kathy Smith. There will only be a record for John Smith, and then as part of John Smith's record, Kathy Smith and Sarah Smith will be added to his record. And if they do have a different address, they can always be updated inside the system. So if a dependent lives somewhere else, yeah, you could add that if needed, or the employee can do it themselves when they Correct. update their details. But All the personal details can be entered by the employee at registration. Gotcha. So this is what it looks like if you have completed for this uh, employee dependent only census where you're going through and first like Jim said everything's tied to the social the employee and then the rest of the details go through that so the third option to show you is Sorry, combining. Can I just say, so yeah, if yeah. the employee social security number is blank okay. at, on the first column in column A the details thereafter will not be attached to any employee because the system would not know which employee to attach the details to it does not go on name it does not get attached to John Smith because John Smith was in there. That's right. It doesn't have any other way to connect you know, it. Okay. You can change anyone's name. So it's the only thing that is consistent across the entire system is and unique is the employee's social security number. Gotcha. So I'm going to go ahead and make that orange and keep that in our template because <laughs> it really is kind of vital. It is. So the last thing we're going to look at, other people choose uh, to do the demo of uh, the employee and dependent census all in one document where you'll see all the same columns and forms that were in the other employee only and the dependent only template, but all combined into one. So it looks slightly different. Uh, I'll click on this one to show you how that might look out or Jim might point out anything that might draw you to do this one rather than the other. Anything else you want to tell them? So as Jeff said, this is a combined census. So this is the last two censuses combined into the one census. The only reason you would choose this is if you had a low amount of employees and you only wanted to do the one upload, um, or if you wanted to keep all the data as con together as possible. This one is slightly different because there will be blank um, spaces in the dependent column for the employee. So across the top in row two, you can see that the dependent and the relationship are blank just because you were importing the employee information. But please note the employee social security number is still filled in in uh, column A so that we can attach the data to the correct social security number. That's really the key of these. It's just seeing how that is. It's just helpful for folks some side to see what a completed census might look like. So even if you have 100 uh, you know, rows on this final completed census, for each one will be the employee and then any dependents. If not, it would switch right in here to the next employee and their details. So those blanks are okay. <clears throat> we just know how helpful it is for everyone to see what one might look like when it's completed. So um, the last thing is just a reminder, we'll uh, wrap up this video on how to do the census and just some final thoughts from Jim. So on this census, if you go across to the columns, especially in column K and L, and they are highlighted in blue saying that they are essential, but because it's a dependent, they don't need to be put into a class and they don't need to be put into a payroll group. 
obviously they don't need their annual base salary and hours per week so this one can be more confusing because gotcha. there will be blanks in places where you we're telling you there shouldn't be blanks gotcha but because it's a dependent they're not an employee so therefore you wouldn't know what payroll they would be in sounds good Okay, I think that wraps up this video for now, and we hope that's really helpful. As always, email or call us and let us know if you have any questions on submitting your census template D Technos. Thanks.